Lompoc charcoal, or briquettes. I put them, as well as a few other options, to the test, measuring how hot they burn, how long they last, as well as a few other important things to see which one's better. Okay, so in this experiment, we're going to light one kilogram of a few different types of charcoal. I've got a variety here of a couple of different types of lump wood, a couple of different types of briquette. And I'll talk through why I've chosen each of these in just a moment. But in theory, what we should see is that because each of these are quite different, the duration that they burn for, the maximum temperature, the volatility of the temperature throughout the burn should all vary. And so when we look at the temperature graphs at the end of this video, we should be able to see not just the difference between lumpwood and briquettes, but also the difference within briquettes, within lumpwoods, so that we can understand what to look for and match the charcoal that we pick based on what we're cooking and what we want the temperature to do throughout the cook. Okay, so first up, we've got the Kamado Joe Big Block XL Lump Wood Charcoal. I believe this is a blend of Argentinian hardwoods. And as you can see from the pieces, these are pretty chunky. Next up, we've got the restaurant grade charcoal from Big K. Big K is one of the most popular brands in the UK. It's the one that you see at all the petrol stations. This highlights really well one of the challenges that we have with charcoal, which is that these two pieces came from the same bag. And yet this is huge, this is tiny. These are gonna burn incredibly differently. Then next up, we've got some ash from Whitland Flame. This is made just down the road from me. This is incredibly high quality charcoal, um, but very, very light. I'm kind of quite curious to see how this burns and how the temperature graphs look at the end. And then moving on to the briquettes. Uh, we've got two that we're going to burn today. The first is uh, by Q the Barbecue. Uh, this is a South African hardwood, and these are made in the sort of traditional Weber style pillows. And lastly, we've got some Whittle Bricks by Woodland Flame. So let's jump into our test. Okay, so on this graph, we've got the temperature, the time, and in red, we've got the three different lumpwoods that we burnt. We've got the Kamado Joe, the wooden flame and the big cake. And in blue, we've got the two different briquettes. We've got the Q, the barbecue and the whittle box. Now, immediately you can see the main difference between lumpwood and briquettes is that the lumpwood burned a lot hotter, but a lot faster. Whereas the briquettes burned at a cooler temperature, but lasted a lot longer and the temperature was far more stable. Now, I should point out that the way I ran this experiment was with all of the vents open on the bullet smoker. If I was cooking under normal conditions, I would likely shut down some of those intake vents to make the charcoal last a bit longer. But for this experiment, I wanted to see what the maximum temperatures I could get off these charcoals were. So that's why I had all of the vents open. So in reality, your charcoal would likely last longer than this. Okay, so what does this all mean in terms of choosing between lumpwood and briquettes? Well, ultimately it depends on, do we want the temperature to do this or do we want it to do this? If we're grilling hot and fast, we probably want to go for lumpwood where we get a hotter temperature faster. And we don't really mind so much if the charcoal only lasts for an hour, an hour and a half. Whereas if we're cooking low and slow, smoking something for 10, 12 hours, we don't want to be topping up our charcoal every hour. And we definitely don't want to have these huge temperature fluctuations. So this is where briquettes can come in handy. But of course, it depends on what you're cooking on. If you're using an offset, you're probably using wood anyway. But if you're using a Kamado or a, a, a Weber kettle or a bullet smoker, then this is where something like briquettes can come in handy. So I mentioned at the start of this video that I'd also test out a few other charcoal options. So first up here, we've got Binchotan. This is considered to be one of the highest quality charcoals in the world, commonly used in Japanese barbecue. So if you've ever had yakitori or Japanese skewers, it was probably cooked over this kind of charcoal. But let's have a look and see how it performed in our test. So this one didn't go quite to plan. Binchotan is supposed to burn very hot for a long time at a very stable temperature, but that's not what I saw here. So overlaid in the green is the Binchotan, and we can see it did burn for a very long time at a very stable temperature, but it didn't burn very hot. And I'm not sure if this is because of the type of binchotan I've got, or maybe one kilogram wasn't quite enough to get those temperatures, or perhaps it may have just come off the chimney a little bit too early. If you've got more experience using binchotan and you can see have I done something really silly here or is this completely normal, I'd love to know in the comments. Now next up, we've got some briquettes made from coconut shells. This stuff's becoming pretty popular as a more sustainable alternative to wood charcoal. Let's have a look and see how it performed in our test. So I was really impressed with these cocoa shell briquettes. You can see from this green line here that these were the second hottest burning of all the charcoals that we tested. The only one that burnt hotter was the Kamado Joe Lumpwood. But more impressively, these burn above 100 degrees Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit for the longest period of time. We had over two hours, 40 minutes above 100 degrees Celsius, and that was with all of the vents open. So if you're looking for hot burning, long lasting briquettes, these are a really interesting option to look at. But of course, it's not just temperature that we have to consider when buying charcoal. We also need to think about the flavor. So given that the main reason why we cook outside and cook on charcoal is for the flavor, it makes sense to think of your charcoal also as an ingredient. 
And while the main reason why we cook on charcoal is obviously as a source of heat and fuel, it also affects the flavor and it can do this both negatively and positively. So this is why on the negative side, it's important to stay away from particularly briquettes that have chemical binders and additives like borax and sodium nitrate or light fluid. But on the positive side, we might want to add that wood smoke taste. And while charcoal doesn't really add much wood smoke, different hardwoods do add a different flavor. And you might want to factor this in based on what you're cooking. Now, I would always recommend if you want to add a particular wood smoke taste, add wood chunks rather than rely on the charcoal but the charcoal is going to make a bit of a difference. Now, if you want to learn how different hardwoods burn, how they taste and how to pair them with different meats, click on the screen and I'll see you over in the next experiment.